Paul's concept of God is very exclusive. He says, we know that an idol is nothing in the world and that there is no other God but one. No other God. There is no one like him, Isaiah says. Yes, Paul is declaring that there is only one God, and that one God is exclusively God, and he deserves our exclusive allegiance, for he has no rivals, and he is to be the object of unrivaled love. All our faith and trust, our whole being, thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and soul and mind and strength. And remember that the Lord Jesus Christ, the one true God who revealed himself in flesh, the word became flesh, the word was God, the word became flesh and dwelt among us. And he said, I am the way, the truth, The life, no one comes to the Father except by me. That is the exclusive claim. Now, when you preach the gospel and you preach the exclusivity of the person and saving work of Jesus Christ, you are going to encounter resistance and criticism in this world. Because in this pluralistic world, People want to believe that there are many ways to God. Jesus said, I am the way to God. They want to believe that there are many truths. Jesus said, I am the truth. And so it is only through him. That is the claim of Christ. That is the claim of the gospel. Let me just illustrate this for you for a moment, how foolish this is. Can you imagine a physician, a researcher, who discovers in his research a cure for AIDS. He tests it over and over again, and he's absolutely sure he has now a cure for AIDS. This would be amazing. This would be wonderful. And as he is putting together all of his research and finalizing everything, he is scheduled to speak at an upcoming dinner that raises money for AIDS research. And in this dinner, he plans to announce that no more research is necessary, for he has found the cure. So he meets with the directors and those of influence, and he lets them know that he has discovered a cure for AIDS, and that he's going to be announcing it at this dinner. But to his shock, they oppose him. And they say, now, wait a minute, you can't do that. First of all, there are thousands of people whose jobs depend on research for AIDS, who are looking for, and they're sincere folks, and they're doing their best, and they're trying. And so who are you to come along and say that you've got a cure? And he says, but I do, I have a cure. It's the cure. Yes, but they're all doing their research. And besides that, what about all the money? Think of the financial havoc this will, this will have because uh, all of the people who are involved and those jobs depend on AIDS research or administering care to AIDS. If you come up with a cure for this, why, uh, all of their jobs will be taken away and that money. And what about that appropriation for uh, billions of dollars that the government has made available? Do you want to see that vanish and we wouldn't have access to that money? And so... Because of the pressure, he finally yields, and when the time comes for this great national banquet on AIDS research, he gets up and he, whatever he says, he does not tell them that he has the cure for AIDS. You say, that is so irrational, that is so absurd, that is so ridiculous, and I could not agree with you more. And it is just that way. When we know that there is only one God, and that there is only one Savior, Jesus Christ, and that the gospel is the only way that a person can be saved, and then people say, now wait a minute, 
Why don't you be a little more open-minded? What about all these other sincere people and sincere religions? And you're saying all of them are wrong and that you've got the answer? Yes, that's exactly right. That's what Paul said. That's what Jesus Christ said. And that's what every church that is a New Testament church that preaches the true gospel says. There is only one way. All other ways are the ways of death and will lead to hell. It is only through Jesus Christ that a person can be saved. This is the point of tension in the world that we live in today. And it was the point of tension in Corinth at that time. We are in a battle for who is God and what is he like. That is the question that is above all questions. Now man is instinctively religious. He has a God consciousness. And man's idea of God is the most driving thing about him. It is his life dynamic. It is the molding force of his life, his allegiance to what he calls and treats as God. He becomes like what he worships. Man becomes like what he worships. Now, Romans chapter 1 and verse 18 And the following verses give us the spiritual history of man. The scriptures tell us there that man suppresses the truth of the gospel, suppresses the truth of God in unrighteousness. And it goes on to explain to us that God has revealed himself in creation. His eternal power and Godhead are made known. But that man has corrupted the image of God, the revelation of God, and has fashioned God after the creature, after four-footed beast, after man himself. Idolatry is the corruption of the image of God. What a person thinks about God is the all-determining concept of human life and society. It is this that determines whether we go to heaven or hell, is what we believe about God. It determines ethics. It determines morality. It shapes the community. It shapes the family. It shapes the government. This, the trouble that we are in in this nation, is because of the false ideas about God that are in our mind. The spiritual battleground we find ourselves in is that the one true God, the Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ, his Son, is not popular with people. People want to believe in a corrupted version of God. And if you're a Bible preacher and a Bible believer, then this is hated. Humanism says, well, man is his own God. Even atheism and agnosticism is really just another form of our being our own God. Islam says, Allah is God, but he is not the God of Scripture. Jehovah and Allah are not the same. Mormonism says, God is a man who became God. And they teach that the Lord Jesus was Satan's brother, and you can become God. The Jehovah's Witness have false ideas about the person of Jesus Christ, that he was an angelic being, but that he is not God. He was created. And the same goes for Baha'i and Buddhism and Hinduism, Confucianism, Hedonism. Hedonism says pleasure is God. All of these are false, twisted versions of God. There is only one God. And it is our responsibility to proclaim the truth about him and his son, Jesus Christ.